hi, welcome to the part two. So, Lana, can I ask you? I mean, as a human being, uh, what is the difference between higher self and guardian angels, or or you know, there are a lot of different forms. Well, I suppose the first thing to say to you is the higher self is your soul that's inside of you, and that's a speck of light of God. It's a, it's a part of Him, and it fills every single part of you. And your guardian angel is the gatekeeper of your soul. So again, it never leaves you for one second because of that. And that is your higher self. You know, that's that's the part we kind of want to go in search of as well, to connect with our higher self. And I believe mankind is striving in that direction. So what what about when, like recently, we got a lot of like. Uh Suicide cases in Hong Kong, very sad, and some of them like really young kids, like 12 or 11 year old. So when people decided, well, it's hopeless or whatever, and I'm going to finish myself. So doesn't it hurt the angels very, very badly? And then they cannot do anything. It does. It, it hurts that person's guardian angel, and I'm always been told to to tell. The young people not to commit suicide. Yeah. That their life is very, very precious, yes. and that they are needed in, in the world. Mm. Um, I would have heard a lot from from young people who would say to me, "You know, Rona, why didn't you write these books before now? Then my friend wouldn't have committed suicide. Oh, come then on. my friend wouldn't have would have known they had a guardian angel and that they weren't alone." And again, I think that's that's important. You know, the guardian angel does everything. You know, if somebody was thinking of committing suicide and they were your friend, you can be sure at times you would be getting feelings that maybe you know I should be a bit nicer to them, or maybe I should take a little time with them. You know, and lots of times a lot we, should be. We, or what we, is. Yeah, we we ignore those. And we shouldn't, because there are thoughts that our guardian angel is putting into our mind to help someone else. But we ignore them. It's like when you're going for a walk and you've planned out your journey and you say exactly which way you know you're going to go, and suddenly the thought comes into your mind when you're on your journey to go right. And a lot of the time, we don't. We continue on. and. Maybe something happened down the road, and that would have been your guardian angel trying to help you to avoid what was what would happen if you stayed on on your plan in that in that way. It's like a young woman I sat beside. Um, I was in America at at, um, at a hotel doing doing a talk, and I was sitting outside. There was another talk on. And this young woman sat down beside me. I think she was about 30. She didn't know who I was. She wasn't coming to my talk, so she knew nothing about me. And out of the blue, she just started talking about when she was a child, 11 years of age. And she said she was in the car with her dad, mom, and her sister. And the car went into a skid, and they were on a cliff road. And she said she remembers, you know, holding her breath. And she said, I saw an angel. The angel was in front of the car with its hands on it, like this. She said, we didn't go over the cliff. She believes it was the angel slowing the car down, you know, helping it to go in another direction so it wouldn't go over the cliff. And she just then looked at me when she finished telling the story and she said, I've never told anyone that before. Like, so there's lots of evidence out there in the world. You will hear people's stories of where something happened or where they believe they saw an angel. But an angel always gives a human appearance. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hotel, so what, yeah. what can you do anyway? No, no, not much. <laughs> so and I also heard that there's a lot of unemployed angels that we can actually ask them, hey, can you give me a... Give me some help. Is it true? It is. This is um, very funny. It is, and I call them unemployed angels. Unemployed. <laughs> unemployed. <laughs> Because Sorry, <laughs> we find it funny, but <laughs> well, they're they're always looking, you know, for 
for a man, woman or child to employ them, you know, to ask for them to come into your life to, to help you with the everyday trivial things. It could be you're, you're getting ready for a party or something like that and you just say, right unemployed angel, I need a helping hand that I get through all of this. Do they and, mind? <laughs> and, 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 and they do help, like, because I have seen them helping. I've, I've seen them helping, you know, a mother with children. I have seen them helping, you know, people carrying stuff. You know, like, I, I know I told the story last night about the old lady. It was just that she gave such a big smile afterwards and I had asked the unemployed angel, you know, did she know you're helping? her carry the bag because it was a fun bag and this elderly lady nearly 80 it was like as if you know she could have swung it up and down as if it was real real light and the unemployed angel said yes she asked me to help and the unemployed angel said yes I'm making the bag lighter for her so she can carry it actually I tried last night did you try it? Mm, yeah, because Santa told me that. She's like, yeah. oh, uh, uh, Lorna actually uh, told us about the unemployed angels. I said, what What can they do for us? They said, Especially like when you're carrying heavy stuff. So I was like, I was carrying some heavy stuff and I was so tired last night. So I said, is there any unemployed angel that can help me lift my stuff a little? <laughs> And you managed, I hope. You did. I, and then I started to feel it. Is it, is it lighter? I, I think so, actually. I think. But I, I find recently, especially as I'm getting older and older, when I was a young woman, younger woman, I don't feel the security I feel now. And now I really feel like I'm protected all the time. There is the Christ energy, and then there are angels, and I got the higher self. To protect me, and I do feel very safe and secure. Well, that's, that is because you believe. Yeah, I think so. You you believe, and 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 it is it is faith. And I suppose that's what I'm doing is is telling people so they can start to believe. Yeah, and I and because I, I I'm a trainer myself, I'm a, a speaker, and I always like. I think if people can see the angels or feel the angels or they learn how to communicate with the angels, they won't feel so alone and they don't they won't feel so hopeless. I, I, I guess I don't know. I guess well, when people commit suicide, they actually feel hopeless and there is no love or there is like too yeah, difficult. They, if they, they can feel the angels, yeah, they may they may stay and communicate mm -hmm. with them. And fast and feel less lonely. Well, isn't that, it? well, that's what it is, you know. When someone does commit suicide, they just feel so desperate. They're yeah. in such a dark place, you know, and they do feel alone. And I think that's why it's so important to let them know they have a guardian angel, so they can feel that energy, so that they can feel that hope, you know, so that they can feel more positive in themselves and know that they're loved. And that helps them to realize that their family does love them. You know that that somebody in work actually loves them and cares for them. You know it, it is that we we lack showing each other that we love each other and care for each other. Like last night, I asked the audience, and I was told, no, you don't ask audience in Hong Kong to give each other each other a hug and say I love you. You know, but the angel said I was to do this. Just so, go ahead. <laughs> so I went ahead and I said, now I want you to all stand up and do this. And everybody did it. And the energy and the happiness and joy, that's what a guardian angel does for you. That's what the angels do for you. They lift the higher self and, and give you all of that. And it just rose in the room like, anything every man and woman stood up um, and everybody made sure nobody was left out you oh know, wow given that hug and saying i love you even you those, mean give a hug and, and said i and said i love you at the same time oh yes i'm not yeah. sure when i can do that yeah. I, I, love love you. You. <laughs> I love you and that is so <laughs> important because you know um i have been traveling all over the world and I would meet men, women, and even children who haven't been hugged or told 
You mean even by their parents. other than Hong Kong people? Yes. <laughs> even because yes. we always think like, oh, the Westerners they are more into hugging and and saying I love you freely, which not, is not true. Not <laughs> not, not in Germany. Not <laughs> any not any more. Like you know, it 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 seems to have. I think the materialistic part of the world. You know, changed people. Even in my own country, you know, we call it the Celtic Tiger. You know, people got greedy and selfish, and they even taught children to be that way. And and in a sense, you know, in just so many countries, not to share anything with anyone, not to say, you know, not to be kind, because it's so important to to share, because that is loving, that is being kind, that is being compassionate. You know, and I think the world has lost an awful lot of that, and we've got to just, you know, leap it back in again. You know, so so that there won't be less suicides. Like when you hear of a twelve-year-old committing suicide, it is oh, just hard. This is so. I don't know how to say it. When when old people with uh, um, sickness that is hard to bear, they they chose to finish their life. We can understand. But when a child of like eleven year old or twelve year old, they're supposed to be like having fun. Yes. They're not even in high school in Hong Kong. We call high school. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're not even like they they didn't start the first love. They never, you know. Yeah, they have. It, it should be like very, this, very yeah. happy and simple life. Play with the dogs or the cats or the kite mm-hmm. or whatever the bluff, the butterfly or or even playing the game. But people today, they kill themselves so early. That is really a. I think this is a social problem and also a spiritual problem. It, it is, and it is right across the world. But those children, you know, they may have all the material things around them. But if the parents and their friends kill and a lot all of other us things, don't have the time. If, if we're so wrapped up in making money and and feeling you have to have all these material things. None of them; those materials are important when you lose a loved one, when yes, a child yes. commits suicide. Yeah. I know oh, all those parents would be saying, "I heard that. Why did I bother with all those things? Yes. You should have loved your child. You should have just given set them, them free. Time. Give them play time, meet friends. Yeah, you should have." I'm so glad that when I was a kid, because my parents were so busy, so they they didn't have time for me. But to me, it's very good because I'm very independent. I, I was I was very rebellious, and because my mother wasn't there, so I got all the time for myself. So I can go to play, and I can go, you know, walking walking around the streets and do whatever I want. And then back in the old days, like 50 years, 40 years ago, um, Hong Kong is much safer yeah, for children. So I can go anywhere. A child without... can't do that now. Yeah, no, not it, not in any country. No, even in even in my own country. You know, a child can't be allowed outside the garden. It's too dangerous. Not even in a garden. No, outside the garden. Not like, even. Oh my God! Like you know, um, and I suppose that's what parents have to remember, or or even grandparents are being pushed to one side now, as well. They're not being allowed to to Touch share the with their with their grandchildren. You know, and children need love. That, they they yes. need to feel, I, you know, loved and cared for. Like, even though your parents were so busy, there's someone there. But, but yet there was somebody there, and and they gave you and the freedom. Different. Yes, and Grand, it was different. Grandparents time. and parents are different because parents can be very pushy. They they so want us to develop and to expand and to you know have experience and be but, better than them. And yeah, be better than parents. But for grandparents, they're just just there to love us. I I can say a lot about this because I never have any grandparent. So, but luckily my mother was so busy. So my mom, my mom was very stern. That like she's really strong, strong. Like and because she was so busy, I'm free. But still, I there's a hole in me. Like I wish I I could have an aunt, auntie, or uncle. Because in Hong Kong, we moved to Hong Kong in the early 60s. I don't have, okay. I didn't have no anything relatives. except my parents. And then my parents are away, so all I have is was time. It's time, but you are a strong person. You have to remember, not every child is as strong as another child. Sometimes a child takes longer to become strong. 
longer to become strong well longer to I think I'm strong allow. as a little kid oh you you were <laughs> that was obvious and it was very obvious your guardian angel and the other angels were entertaining you even though maybe you were not aware of it you know in that way but they were looking after you and protecting and you now and now you you say that I think I remember some moments even when I was alone there are things that really make me laugh I think they are doing something <laughs> definitely <laughs> you know, okay I'm sorry okay so actually what can we ask the angels to help us I know one thing for Hong Kong people don't ask your angels to give you money okay it's not going to work <laughs> so what can we ask them to to work how, how can we work with them or to communicate with them or I, I, I think you know the, the first thing you do is just say to yourself right I have nothing to lose in believing I have a guardian angel and I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to give it a go for the next say three months something like three that. months yes. just to say three months and and maybe the first thing you you do maybe is ask your guardian angel for a sign but keep it small <laughs> you know not something like you want to win the lotto or so you know forget it forget it exactly forget it. if if that works we'll be like billionaires exactly <laughs> <laughs> but it 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 doesn't <laughs> They, they encourage you to get a job, they will help you that way, but you have to work to earn your money. It's only a few that win the lotto, I'm afraid. There's not a lotto for everyone in that way, but ask your guardian angel for, for a sign. And again, it could be a feather. Again, you could ask for flowers or, or you could ask for... A butterfly. A butterfly, or you could ask for someone to give you a smile. You could ask for, you know, umpteen different things, but small things. But remember, if you ask for a flower or something small, even a feather, a child could hand it to you. And adults have this terrible habit of a child handing you a tiny wild flower, kind of saying, oh, thank you, lovely, you know. And then when you walk along, you drop it mm. because you, that's not good enough. You wanted a big flower from your guardian angel. But sometimes it's hard for your guardian angel to get you to give you, you know, that big flower that you might be looking for. But a child will do, a young child will always do what its guardian angel asks it to do. And if a guardian angel, when you were walking through the park or down the road, um, said to a child, pull that little flower and give it to that lady there, the child will run over and give it to you. I don't ask any questions where the adult, I'm afraid, will say, what's in it for me? Why should I do that? You know, when your guardian angel puts a thought into your mind. You know? And one other thing to remember is your guardian angel can help you in everything in your life. You just ask for the help. You just talk to your guardian angel like you're talking to me. And you can give out as well. You know, you can complain. You can do all of that because... Remember, your guardian angel is your best friend. It's your companion. It's right there with you all of the time. I remember when I was in a very low time, very, very low time. I lost my job for five years. I didn't know what to do. I, I, I was having a depression. And one evening, I was looking down the balcony and I was thinking, oh my God, how am I going to get out of it? And I didn't know that there are another five years. And I heard, I heard a voice that told me that everything is fine. Everything is just fine. So clearly yeah. from my right ear, it says everything will just be fine. And, it, it, and, and the voice repeat twice, because I cannot say it's a she or a he. I just heard yeah. like, everything is fine. Everything is just fine. And I, I even answered back like, how, can, how could that be fine? I didn't have a job for five years. It's not so fine. And it was, it was a very uh, ex interesting experience. Well, that was your guardian angel talking to you, letting you know that everything will be fine. Well, long no matter long. how long it took. Yes. But look at where you are today. Interviewing you. Exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we we really run out of time. So, 40 minutes is really not enough, and I really look forward for your next coming to Hong Kong, so we can do a much longer interview. Yeah, and I look forward to yeah. to to that. I'm afraid we have to say goodbye we, now. Yes. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye.